stop right away. Okay, so here we go. All right. Uh, so welcoming, welcome here, everyone. I'm just going to start with a land acknowledgement. That's what we do uh, on Indigenous Insight Nights. So I'm uh, beaming in from the swindled lands of Treaty 1 territory. These are the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, the Inihu, the Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota. And this is the birthplace of the Métis Nation. Uh, the colonial name for this city is Winnipeg. Does uh, anyone else from other lands have uh, like to acknowledge where the, oh, Shelly's here, Shelly's here. <laughs> Admit, there we go. I think we both collected at the same time. Yeah, so if anyone's from other, other uh, lands they'd like to acknowledge, uh, we'll give space for that. A lot of Winnipeggers here, but I know we're not everyone. Okay, so uh, again, um, at non-trivial trivia, uh, the idea is to look it up and learn. So these are open book trivia questions. Uh, the, all the answers to all the questions in the trivia game that we're gonna be playing soon is at this website. Oh, sorry, correction, this website. <laughs> um, when we're learning about the Native Americans who assisted the Underground Railroad. So that's the link. I'll just pop this in the chat. for everybody and there we go. Okay, so enter, look up the answers on that website and answer the questions on CrowdPur. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about uh, prizes. We've got some exciting prizes tonight. Um, somebody is gonna win this book. Uh, it's called The Indians of Hungry Hollow. And this is the, written record of the oral history of some of the history that we're learning here. So that's that's kind of what you're gonna find out. Why well, I, I won't say too much because it's one of the questions, but oral history is a big thing and some of it got recorded. So, and this book is uh, not that easy to find, but uh, our friend Valerie from uh, Tusume uh, found us, uh, found a source for it. So we're gonna order the book from Tusume uh, after, after someone wins it tonight and I'll put in, we'll have to get your shipping address. So if you win, don't leave right away. Okay, stick around <laughs> so we can get your address and then we'll put it on the on the forum. Uh, we've also got a special prize for the first family. So if there's any families here uh, playing as a team, you get to win a special prize. We've got this uh, lovely coloring book and it comes with the markers, with the markers too. And you get the crayons. Okay, so you get the whole the whole kit. So, uh, but that's for the, the top family. Okay, so if you, you're playing here as a team with your kids, um, and you're the fastest team is uh, at learning stuff at that website, uh, you're gonna be the one uh, to win the prize. Okay. Uh, I see Jen is uh, answering Shelly's question in the chat. That's perfect. All right, are we, um, what else do we have to do? Oh yeah. Um, so if you'd like to help us out in getting these, these prizes, uh, you can contribute. I'll just pop a link into the chat again. And there you go. If you go to this website, uh, you can chip in uh, a buck or two and help us buy prizes uh, to give away to other people because that's uh, it's fun. All righty. I think that covers everything. Uh, did I miss anything, Jen, or should uh, you take it away? Uh, I don't think you missed anything. Okay, well, let's go. And Shelly is back. Yep. Although blind and deaf. Um, <clears throat> okay, everyone's ready? Let's go. Name one of the two primary reasons for the absence of Native Americans in the historical record of the Underground Railroad. A, both freedom seekers and Native Americans who assisted them came from oral cultures. B, Native Americans were not involved. C, local histories start the clock with white settlement, ignoring Native American contributions. D, there was no Underground Railroad. Okay. So if you were to answer right now, and you, if you would answer correctly, you'd get 88 points. And that number is going down towards zero. And if we get to five minutes, then there, there's no point. So that should give everyone enough time to uh, find the answer. Um, so I'll let you think. Thank 
thinking you did. Jen, I'm not sure how many you're playing, so you'll have to. Well, I, yeah. I was just trying to figure out how I can see. It shows eight players, but yeah. I think I'm considered one because I have it open, maybe? Maybe. Oh, you just brought me dinner. Yay. Are you, are you playing too, Michael? No. No, you're not. OK. Yeah, I know all the answers. That's not fair. <laughs> You would do really well. <laughs> I have six votes. Um, I feel like there are more. That came through. Okay, just because we're getting a count of how many people are playing, I'm going to talk about the answer and that'll give people who are still thinking time to time to learn the answer. So um, first, both freedom seekers and seekers fleeing slavery in the South and the Native Americans who assisted them in the Midwest came from oral cultures. So there, there's one of the answers. Uh, second, uh, local histories, including the large volume of county histories produced across the Midwest in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, start the clock with white settlement, ignoring Native American contributions generally, and particularly those after the War of 1812. So that would be your second correct answer. So if you got either of those, uh, you get all the points. Okay, so you get all the points for answering, uh, for getting one of the two. Alrighty. So we still have six, we got six answers, uh, Jen? Six, yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be our head count then, because I think everyone's, everyone's <laughs> chimed in by now. Right. Okay, well, both A and C were correct. Hold my mouse here. And everyone answered correctly. Oh, good job, everyone. <laughs> okay, are we ready for question two? Yeah. Question two, which is or are evidences that freedom seekers received assistance from Native Americans? Simple geography, narratives of the enslaved, Native American oral histories, written records of white traders, trappers, missionaries, and soldiers, DNA records, or all of the above. We have six responses and four were correct, which was F, all of the above. I answered way too quickly and I got it wrong. <laughs> Save that for the lightning round. That's the last question. I think Carrie saw some correct answers in the headings and got one of the good I've not learned my lesson because I've done this before. <laughs> Ready. There we go. 
Look at that, Barb. 195. Uh, the birth family. Yeah, 187. That's that's upsetting. Actually, this is this is a pretty close game. It's a tight race. Mm -hmm. Okay, question three. Mi Michigan Road was a major thoroughfare for freedom seekers making their way through central Indiana. Which indigenous peoples lived along this route? The Navajo, the Potawatomi, the Apache, or the Blackfoot? Oh, I Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was B, the Potawatomi. That's one, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm probably not, but the correct answer was B. Right. I think it's Potawatomi. They actually live right um, where my parents live in Illinois as well. So um, yeah. Chief Shabanaugh was the town, um, he was the chief of the town where um, I live. So it's really fun to share that with Laura. So it was a great question. It is cool. me. Got it. Okay, question four. <clears throat> In the 1800s, where was a Maroon community who harbored freedom seekers housed? In the Standing Rock Reservation, in the Lake Traverse Reservation, in the Cheyenne River Reservation, or in the Wyandotte Grand Reserve? It's getting back to question three. Um, said in the article there, the Michigan Road, a uh, major thoroughfare for freedom seekers making their way through central Indiana, uh, ran through or past dozens of Potawatomi <laughs> villages north of the Wabash. That is so neat that one of our guests is in that territory on those lands. That's uh, Okay, we have six votes. The correct and all correct answers uh, was D in the Wyandotte Grand Reserve. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> it's gonna be competitive. Should we look at, oh, there we go. 
Ooh. 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 That is tight. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. Still lots of time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, question five. Whose freedom-seeking family was taken in, fed, put up in a wigwam, and then escorted to Lake Erie, where they arranged for passage across to Upper Canada? Mrs. Susan Bell escaped from a plantation in Alabama in 1857. Josiah Henson, who escaped enslavement in Kentucky along with his family. Jermaine Logan, who escaped enslavement in Tennessee. Or John Farney, who also escaped enslavement in Tennessee. Good job with those names, Jen. You're, uh, you're just fearless with the names. So here's what I uh, learned about uh, Q4 from the article there from Thinker B. Uh, from about 1800 to 1843, uh, a maroon community of sorts existed at Negro Town in the heart of the wine and the Grand Reserve. So that, there's your answer on the Sandusky River. It was peopled by uh, people uh, escaping enslavement from Kentucky or Western Virginia uh, who had followed this Silkato, that's probably wrong, uh, trail no northward. Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was B, Josiah Henson, who escaped enslavement in Kentucky along with his family. Actually, just a little bit of interesting insight. Um, I know where in Upper Canada Josiah Henson ended up settling. It was in a region called Chatham-Kent. And the reason I know that is I was there over the Thanksgiving weekend, and I saw a number of signboards and things like that acknowledging um, him and, and what his cabin is. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was neat to see that. I didn't have an opportunity yet to go to the Black History Museums and, and uh, locations there, but I will be next time I go. And I anticipate I'll be there in the new year. Wow. Well, we live in Kentucky and we're super glad his family was able to leave, so. <laughs> okay. Question six. Who were aided at a number of Potawatomi villages receiving food, shelter, and directions as they traveled from Tennessee to Michigan and then on to Canada? Josiah Henson, Jeremy Logan, Jermaine Logan, sorry, uh, John Farney, or both B and C? Oh, shoot. I messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Once you click, it's clunk. <laughs> There's no one click. It's click in there. <laughs> I've learned my lesson now. <laughs> Lots of time. Four more questions. <laughs> and you can always catch up in the lightning round. Well, more. There we go. So now I'm going to drop down. <laughs> Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was Barb. <laughs> both B and C. B, both B and C. <laughs> okay, question seven. Which peoples are recorded by oral tradition as helping a group of 21 freedom seekers avoid the slave patrols around Detroit? The Apache, the Ottawa and other Ojibwa tribes, the Potawatomi, or the Blackfoot. Here you go. Potawatomi just rolls off the tongue once you say it a few times, right? Well, now that I know how to do it, I yeah. understand.
Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was B. Ottawa and other Ojibwe tribes. Hmm. Question eight. Which missionaries in Green Bay joined the Mohican peoples who lived east of Lake Winnebago in assisting freedom seekers making their way through Eastern Wisconsin? Jordan and Eric Achterhoff, Eliza and Jeremiah Porter, Eric and Marcy Ass, or Ryan and Becky Bondi? Let's talk about question seven while people uh, think about question eight. So there, there were Ottawa elders. They were fearful that uh, the runaways would be overtaken and captured by slave captures. And uh, sensing that they sent them to Detroit uh, or sensing that sending them to Detroit was unsafe at the time. Uh, they arranged for 10 Ottawa men to accompany them uh, overland to the Straits of Mackinac uh, where they were handed off to a friendly Ojibwe who took them further and further. So it's, uh, very, very hands-on, you know, they didn't just give them directions, they, they went with them. You know. Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was B, Eliza and Jeremiah Porter. Hmm. Those are all real missionary names. I went on Google, support a missionary and picked out a bunch of wrong answers. But only one, only one couple is in, the, uh, is in the article and good job everyone who got that. Okay, let's do this. Oh, <laughs> that was that little slip, eh, Barb? <laughs> Got the wrong still, point. Still a tight game, guys. It mm -hmm. is. Okay, question nine. Eliza Porter's memoir recounts a story of the Mohicans from Stockbridge helping a family of four avoid slave patrols and gain passage on which steamer? Michigan, the Niagara, the Mo Milwaukee Clipper, or the SS Kiwi? All of those boats sailed the Great Lakes, but only one is in the article. Didn't put down the Edmund Fitzgerald? I did not put down the Edmund Fitzgerald. I probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one everyone knows, yeah. Every, every Canadian of a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Actually, I've got a friend in Alabama who's a huge Gordon Lightfoot fan. Mm -hmm. Her parents listened to him all the time when she was growing up. Vintage. Exactly. We don't want to say old. No.
good funky music. <laughs> Okay, we have six votes. The correct answer was A, the Michigan. Hmm. Can I talk about question nine before we talk about the lightning round? Sure. Okay, so, uh, so the Stockbridge helped their guests make their way to Green Bay and gain passage on the steamer Michigan, uh, which carried them to Freedom in Canada West, uh, which is formerly Upper Canada. But it can't be that far west because <laughs> Great Lakes, <laughs> Tinker D is thinking there. <laughs> so the lightning round is a good chance to catch up if you're uh, running a little bit behind. Uh, you get double or triple the points. I can't remember how we set it up, but you don't get much time at all. Okay, so instead of, uh, you know, this is slowly counting down towards zero. Uh, we're at 38, 37, and the lightning round is not going to be like that. It's going to be zzz. In fact, if you wait for Jen to finish asking the question before you've answered it, you're probably going to get zero points. So this is a big, big chance to catch up. Don't I will you. read it, but you should be done. Yeah. Um, that should... said, mm -hmm. now, now that we're here, I can't remember if I adjusted the time and the points. <laughs> I fixed it, Jen. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. You missed it, but I, I caught it. So it's good. Just show us the scores oh. before we uh before you let her let her rip. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you work. Yep. It's because I had to add a whole new question, right? And yep. then got it. No excuses. Okay, everybody ready? Nope. Uh, let's show us the score. So we know what's at stake. Awesome. <laughs> okay. High stakes here. Okay. Yes, there is oh, enough points in the lightning round for anyone to catch up. Uh, so tight. Except. For Rose, and <laughs> sorry, and I think Shelly had to leave early. She told me that uh, part way through. So, yeah. okay, I'm Here giving you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so inviting. Question ten: Which Native American genealogist has found extensive evidence of African American ancestry within the Midwest Indigenous peoples' DNA? A, what's a genealogist? B, Don Green. C, I have no idea. D, <laughs> these lightning rounds move too quickly for me. And if you need a hint, there's only one, there's one answer that's green. <laughs> green means go, <laughs> if it's not obvious enough. <laughs> Everyone has answered. It was indeed B, Don Green, the green. Dun, da, da, da. There you go. Look okay. at this. All right. <laughs> Look at this. So, uh, less than 100 points between first and third. Amazing. Amazing. Now, um, you're from Tennessee, is that right? Uh, the births? Um, we're from Kentucky, but you know the international shipping is really expensive because my sister's in Canada. So, if there's a classroom that would enjoy them or if anyone's a teacher or has little kids that would probably be best for you all because we just have fun playing and yeah. I know sometimes it costs a ton just for us to ship them a book or something so you guys are awesome that's so sweet we just have fun playing yeah. and this is really fun because um yeah the land I lived on when I was built was part of Chief Shavana mm -hmm. and the Potawatomi tribe so I have to call my parents and tell them that my kids learned about it because that was really cool yeah awesome well i think you won awesome. last time and then uh Tusume don't ship to the the states um so we weren't able to send you your prize so we, we got the markers this time hoping that you would come back but i just feel bad because i don't know how much it costs to ship them but we're always happy to pass things on to other kids too so okay whatever you guys feel like doing but thank you so much for hosting You're thanks welcome. for coming this is awesome. Well, we'll probably pay it forward then and use this uh, next time we have families. <laughs> and you'll probably win again. <laughs> and one of these times, <laughs> we're going to get your address and pop them in the mail. It's, we'll uh, just we'll just pack them all together. Yeah. Maybe we'll make a trek up there sometime. We'd yeah. really like to. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh well, thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, you're welcome. Family. Awesome.
Well, that was fun. It's nice to be back. It's been, uh, we had some scheduling problems that we had to fight through there uh, with people going on holidays and we added some more people to the team, which made everything harder to schedule and all that. So it's, uh, it's really nice. Uh, nice to be doing this again. So we're going to be trying to do things a little more regularly now. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between Saturdays and Sundays um, just to avoid conflicting with the Jets because uh, we can't, <laughs> we can't compete with that. <laughs> Nor should we. Absolutely. How did you find out about us, Rose? Rose, you're on mute. I think I have the power to unmute her. There we go. Do you? Okay. Oh. Uh, Shelly's my niece. Oh, oh cool. fun. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're really uh, happy to be connected with Shelly. Black History Manitoba, uh, Rhonda there, uh, knows Shelly, and uh, she said she might be uh, want to be involved to so be connected with her, and it's been uh, it's been uh, great uh, so far. So I be you should be very proud of Rose. Um, Shelly's an amazing person. Like, she really uh, is. Has I been. Her. I love reading her column. Yeah. Oh, me too. But yeah, I. Jen and, and Mike, thank you so much for the work that you guys put into setting this up. I mean, I, it's always fascinating. Uh, I, this is only, unfortunately, I think the second, maybe third non-trivial night that I've participated in just because of technology and I didn't have a laptop and now I do. So now I can do this far more easily. Um, I'd had to rely on a desktop that went away. So um, now I'm going to plan to be here all the time. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit hard without a laptop for sure. I um, <laughs> my uncle did it on the phone. I don't know how he. Well, he would he would sort of do Zoom on the phone and prop it up and point at him while he did his own thing on <laughs> did his own thing on the computer. Yeah, he hasn't been to the last couple. Uh no, his uh, his weekends got busier. So. Oh okay. Yeah. I was uh, trolling him though at the bar. He's from BC, right? So, uh, and I was at the game. So I was uh, kept saying zero, <laughs> zero. <laughs> Can you count to zero? <laughs> I'm sure he really enjoyed that too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, guys. I look Thank forward you. to the next one. We'll Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Talk to you soon.